Moving on to the translation. A translation T is a transformation where all the points of a figure are moved the same distance in the same direction. So the notation for a translation is a capital T. A translation can also be referred to as a shift or a slide, and a vector is used to demonstrate the distance or magnitude and direction of the translation. It has an initial point and a terminal point. And the component form of the vector is noted with those symbols, um, with A being the shift um, left or right, and B being the shift up or down. Okay, it combines the horizontal, so the horizontal shift left or right is noted by A, and the vertical shift is noted by B. So let's take a look at these two trapezoids. And let's take a look at A and A prime. So let's draw first the vector. All a vector is is an arrow, okay? So from A to A prime, let's draw the arrow. Okay, so that notes the shift that was made, okay? A is the initial point, so it's the letter written first, where A prime is the terminal point. So let's take a look at that horizontal shift or component for the notation. So we went right, one, two, three, four, five. So five is the horizontal shift. And now let's take a look at the vertical shift. So we're going down, one, two. And you see that forms a right triangle. So down two would be a negative two, and it's not a parenthesis, it's those brackets. So because this is in the shape now of a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude or the length of that vector. So let's do that off to the right. So the magnitude or length, we can do, um, instead of doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we can set it up in terms of the c. Again, this was five and two. We don't note the negative, only in the component form um, of the vector to know that we were going down. But when we count the boxes for length, it's a positive. So it's a c squared equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. So 25 plus four is the square root of 29. Because distance and direction are fixed for every point, we move it the same distance in the same direction. The shape and size of the image are the same as the pre-image. So therefore, again, distance is preserved. Okay, And the triangles, this ends up being a congruency transformation. Okay, which remember they note as a rigid motion. So therefore, a translation is a rigid motion. Properties that are preserved. Oh, and before that, we're going to note um, the rule or how it's written. So if you have a transformation AB, so it says A units means you're going to add the units because A is written first, that's your horizontal component. Add those units to the x value. When B written second, we add those units to the y value. Now we can take a look at the properties. Because it's a rigid motion, we have distance, angle measure preserved, uh, parallelism. Okay. So if we had a trapezoid and shifted, um, for instance, the trapezoid's bases would remain parallel. Points that are on a line remain on the same line. And let's take a look at orientation. So from A to B to C, that is clockwise. From A prime, B prime, C prime, that's also clockwise. So unlike the reflection, orientation is preserved. And because distance is preserved, your area and perimeter are also preserved. All right, examples one through four. 
Determine the coordinates of the image of the point 5, 3 under a translation. Negative 2 is the x, means left 2. Negative 1 for the y means down 1. Okay, so you can move that in the coordinate plane or simply, again, subtract 2 from the x, subtract 1 from the y, and we end up with the image which we know with the prime symbol. So t prime is the point 3, negative 4. Number 2 says the image of a point under the translation is negative 1, 5. Now, this said, you got to watch out for the language. Determine the image, where this says the image is. So it may be helpful to note we're going from one point to the point negative 1, 5. Whoops. That's our resulting point. So negative 1, 5. What are the coordinates of the original point? Well, it said we took the x value and we add 3 to it to get negative 1. Well, you could set up a little equation. So x plus 1 equal, or x plus 3, rather, equals negative 1. And solve it, and we get x equals negative 4. Or you can simply do the opposite of adding 3 and then subtract 3. Okay? So our answer is negative 4. And then we took the y value and subtracted 4. We got 5. So what minus 4 is 5? You can do that in your head or go backwards and add 4 to 5, and we get 9. You could also set up that little equation and solve it. Number 3, determine the translation. So what is the rule that maps negative 5, 5 to 7? Well, you can set up an equation and say, okay, take negative 5 and add what to it to get 7? And say, I take 5 and add what to it to get 1 and solve them both? Or you can simply do that in your head. So here we get 12 and here we get negative 4. So the rule is t, 12, negative 4. Or you can also write the rule as x comma y, as we saw in the number 2, with the arrow, and say add 12 to the x, subtract 4 to the y. Okay, and they might give it to you either way in a multiple choice. A translation that maps the point, so we're going from negative 2, negative 5, to negative 4, negative 4. What is the image of 1, 4 under the same translation? Well, let's first see what we have to do. Well, to go from a negative 2 to a negative 4, we must have subtracted 2. So subtract 2 here, and we get a negative 1. From a negative 5 to a negative 4, we must have added 1. So then add 1 here, 4 plus 1 is 5. So our answer is negative 1, 5. And the last one before we take a look at a rotation. This one says draw the vector that defines the translation. So let's do it from C to C prime. So let's draw the arrow. Write the component form of the vector. So again, we're going to use those brackets. What's our horizontal movement? We go right one, two, three, down one. So right down one, be positive three, and then negative one. Find the magnitude. So we just look at the triangle, and then it's uh, two legs are three and one. So again, I'm going to set up as a c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and nine plus one is the square root of ten. Now on to the rotation. So have your compasses ready. I like to use the rotation. I like to use the compass to do the rotation. All right, rotations. And as I said, have your compass handy. 
I'm going to slide this off to the side as we read this paragraph. A rotation, which is noted with a capital R, so a lowercase for reflection, capital for rotation, is a transformation in which a figure is turned about a point called the center of rotation for a specified number of degrees. Rays drawn from the center of rotation to a point in its image form this angle of rotation. A point and its image are equidistant from the center of rotation, and the center of rotation can be part of the figure, or it may be outside the figure, but it does not move in the rotation, so it's fixed. Another word for fixed is invariant, meaning it doesn't change. If no point is mentioned, then the center of rotation is assumed to be the origin, or zero, zero. Rotations are counterclockwise unless otherwise stated. So if it's in a positive degree measure, it's a counterclockwise rotation. It's a negative degree. It's noting a clockwise rotation. Okay. So let's note first our quadrants. So one, two, whoops, two's on the other side. Two's here, three's here, and four's here. So that's why we're rotating in this counterclockwise direction, because we're going in order of the quadrants. All right, so let's first talk about um, the center. The center here is the origin. So if I were to connect the origin to C, and then the origin to C prime, that looks to be at about a 90 degree rotation, okay? Remember, it is positive because we're going in that uh, counterclockwise direction. Now take your compass, put your compass point on the center of rotation, so the origin, and let's bring it up to point A. Okay, remember we said that each point and its image are equidistant. Well, we have um, three different rotations here, okay? We have the first one, so I'll number this one. We have the second rotation, and you can see the two prime symbols, and then the third rotation. Each time, every point in its image, so A, A prime, A double prime, A triple prime, should all be equidistant from the origin, meaning you should be able to draw a circle through all of them. And there you go, there you have it. Okay, the shape and size of the image are the same as the pre-image. Okay, so a rotation um, distance is preserved. So I'm gonna check that, mark that. The triangles are congruent. So therefore, a rotation is a rigid motion. Other properties that are preserved, okay. Uh, angle measure, because it's a rigid motion. Parallelism, if it was a trapezoid, we talked about the bases would remain parallel and points that are on the same line remain on the same line. So let's check orientation. So A, B to C, that is a counterclockwise notation. Um, a prime, B prime, C prime is also noted in a counterclockwise no, um, notation. So therefore, orientation is preserved. And because it's a rigid motion, your area and perimeter will also remain the same. Okay, so the rules. You can use these rules or you can simply turn, rotate, use your compass, so on and so forth for your 90 degree, 180 degree, or 270. Okay, there are equivalent rotations, for instance. So we could go in a clockwise rotation for 90 degrees to get from NN prime, or we can rotate in a counterclockwise rotation. It's a larger degree, right, um, as we're rotating more to get from NN prime, but it's still the same, and it has to form a full 360 degrees, so this would have to be 270. And to note the clockwise direction, we simply make it negative. So a rotation of 90 is the same as a rotation of negative 270. A rotation of 180 
is the same as a rotation of 180 in the opposite direction as 180 and a 180 add up to 360. And then a rotation of 270 clockwise versus counterclockwise would be a rotation of 90. Okay? So they're opposite signs and add up to the same number of 360. All right, now coordinates. So let's say I'm making this up. Say n is the point 1, 3. So let's label that for all. Take a minute uh, and rotate your paper, okay, with this axis, put your pen or pencil here, um, and we're going to rotate it left one turn. And when you do that, the y-axis is now going to land on the x-axis, okay? So instead of going, it's going to involve these two numbers, 1 and 3, so instead of going over 1 and up 3, we're now going over 3 and up 1. Okay, so left 3, up 1. So the rule for x, y, again, we're using the same numbers, it just becomes negative y, because it's switched, negated, but the x value stayed the same. The 1 stayed a positive 1. So negative y, x. Um, now 1, 3. So again, instead of going up 1, over 3, uh, we're now going left one because that's the shorter distance. Again, we're using the same numbers, and then down three. So left one, left one, down three. So the x went negative this time, so negative x, negative y. We simply just negate them. And then this time, again, instead of going up one, or right one, up three, we're going right three, down one, because we're going farther this is the longer side, so that has to be the 3, and that has to be the 1. So this is 3, negative 1. So the y value stayed the same, but just became the first coordinate, so y, and then the x value negated. And it says here to the right that note that a rotation of 180 is the same as a point reflection through the origin. So this is a rotation of 180 shown in the picture. But you should be able to draw any, so if I drew a line in our reflection, so there's a line connecting the point, and that's right in the middle. So it's reflected right over that point. It's like hopping right over the point, so hopping right over the origin here, we get to here. Okay, so and that's the same as that. And then drawing or connecting these two, again, it's right in the middle. So a rotation of 180 is the same as reflecting right over the origin. All right, number six. Graph and state the coordinates of A prime, B prime, C prime. The image of triangle ABC under the transformation. So we're doing a rotation of 90 degrees. Okay? So I'll take one point, say A for example. Well, first I'm going to write down all the coordinates of my pre-image or original triangle here. So take a minute, write down the coordinates. I like to draw the arrow and note my transformation. And then, whoops. And then note, again, I said we had to state the coordinates of A prime, B prime, C prime. So I'll do one with the grid. And then I'll actually note um, or use that rule to do the others. So here's B. Okay, where if it doesn't say about a point, this is going to be about the origin because it doesn't say. So Again, this axis gets moved, this x-axis gets moved up to the y. So b, which we're, again, we're using the same numbers, was right 7 up 1. We're now reflecting it here, or use your compass. Okay, I like, I said before, I like using the compass, so let's use it. Let me show you how to use it. So let's put in the point on the origin, the pencil tip on b, and let's grab a different color. And let's draw here. 
So B is going to be somewhere on that circle. Okay? And when I turn my paper upwards, B is going to land right here. So there's B prime. Okay? So it's negative 1, 7. So negative 1, 7. So what happened, again, we take the rule, the x value goes first and negated. So that 8 becomes negative 8, that 4 becomes negative 4. And what happened to the y? It remained the same. So, or the x became the y, and it, and it stays the same sign. It's positive. So this becomes negative 8, 9, and negative 4, 2. Okay, so now I can graph that. So negative 8, 9, C, negative 4, 2, and connect. Okay? All right. 7 through 10. Let's take a look at 7 and 8 first. If the letter P is rotated, so I'm going to draw it here. Whoops. Need to be on pen. So here's, we'll use this space here. Here's P. If it's negative, remember that means we're going clockwise. So I rotate P clockwise. Here's the first turn, second turn, third turn. 180 degrees. So from here to here is 90, and then here to here. 180. So the correct answer here is choice 3. Which rotation about the origin is equivalent to? So if it's a negative 200, that's the same as a rotation of a positive. It has to add up to 360, so a positive 160. 9, the point negative 3, negative 2 is reflected, uh, reflected in the origin. So if you want to draw a picture, the left three down two, so here's the point, and you're going to reflect it right through the origin, and it's going to be here. So if you went left three down two, left three down two, you're going to do the opposite and go right three up two. So that's choice two. Remember, that's also the same. So a reflection through the origin is also the same as a rotation of 180 degrees. What is the minimum degree of rotation that a regular decagon will carry on to itself? Um, all right. What is the minimum degree? So I can't draw a decagon. But a decagon has 10 sides, and it's regular. So 10 congruent sides and 10 congruent angles, remember. So if we take 360, which is a full rotation, and divide it by 10, we get 36 degrees. So that would be our minimum rotation. And last is our construction. This time we're going to construct the center of rotation. Remember, the center of rotation is a point. Okay, and it gives us a little hint in the box. The center of rotation is the point of intersection of the perpendicular bisectors connecting a point in its image. So let's connect, let's say, let's look at this point, let's call this, um, uh, oh, let's call this Q, and then Q prime would be here. So we draw a segment, we bisect the segment, so that's the two arcs from each endpoint of the segment. Just making sure your pencil goes past, which it is. So an arc from here, an arc from here, and the line segment connecting. Whoops, I need the line segment tool, and let's do that in black. So I'm going to make it really long because I need the point of intersection of these perpendicular bisectors. So we need to do at least two. Okay. Now let's look at another point in its image. Let's do, 
Hmm, let me do, I don't want them overlapping, so let's call this P, and therefore this would be P prime. So we draw the segment connecting the two points, and then we bisect it. So using the compass, move this up. Point goes on P, pencils past the midpoint. We're going to draw an arc from here and an arc from here. And then close that. I'm done. Now with the line tool in black, all I need is where these two black lines cross. So, but I will extend it. And then let's grab orange. So let's move it down. This point right here, I put a point there, is the center of rotation. And I like to make sure that it's clear that this is my center of rotation.